Marianne standing by with an expert to break down the food facts and also break down her little hand or the, the holder for her book. Right, so I'm just going to hold it in my yeah. own hands. This is registered dietitian Felicia Stoller. We all hear these, uh, these statements made in the news. How rude about one day something's good for you, the next is not bad for you. That's right. I know or that it is bad for you. Well, it seems like things flip-flop, but you know what really happens is that over time we get more research and we learn a little bit more about what is, you know, good and what is maybe not so good. All right, so we're going to take this. This is her book, by the way, that I'm going to hold. I'm going to sit down right over here. Yeah. Uh, let's start over here with eggs. Yeah, Popular you know, the incredible food. edible egg. Sure. People always ask me about, can I have eggs in there? Then people avoid eating the yolks. And I always tell them, you, sh you know, you should eat the yolks. That's where all the good stuff is. That's where yeah. the essential fatty acids are, the vitamins and minerals um, are in there. And you can have an egg. You know, it was back in the 60s that they said eating foods that have cholesterol causes you to have high cholesterol. And what we've learned is that all animal foods have cholesterol. It's the building blocks of a lot of our hormones in our body. So not a bad thing. Have an egg. I eat them all the time. They're a very inexpensive source of complete protein. That's good. Mm -hmm. Good for you here. All right. Coffee. Yes. So far, you're, I'm two for two on things that I have <laughs> coffee, every day. I yeah. know. So coffee is another one of those uh, foods where people are concerned about caffeine and ha their heart sure. rate. And, of course, like being kept up and having rapid heart rate. For some of us, we are genetically uh, predetermined to either be sensitive to caffeine or not. The good news is, is that there's lots of antioxidants antioxidants in coffee so you yes. can grab that cup yes. and go may be helpful in pre preventing diseases like uh, Alzheimer's dementia and type 2 diabetes very good so there you go Sounds have your good. cup of joe all right very good all right what's this case is this yogurt oh, well yogurt well, okay. So, okay so yogurt is a good food let's start with it being good but what's not good is when you're getting it with all the candy on top, right right you know and sorry good sorry I yeah. know Ooh. I know but but you know there are other <laughs> ingredients in yogurt that sometimes people get a little like crazy about like carrageen carrageen Mm -hmm. So I wanted to bring this with you. So you're going to get to try this today. So Ooh. carrageenan comes from red seaweed. Okay. So um, they, they also favorite. call it like Irish moss, right? So it's a sea vegetable. It's salty. Yeah. Look like someone, some people said tastes like, like a raisin or something. It's like something. salty paper. Right. So basically, it's a sea vegetable, and what it does for you in terms of health may help to lower mm. cholesterol because, you know, it's a fiber. But in yogurt, what it does is it helps to keep it together mm. and provides okay. a little bit of thickness well, there. I'm sorry, because I've seen that on the recipe, but you know what you guys got to do? You know me. Yeah. So anyway, so carrageenan, not a bad ingredient to have also may help reduce the amount of time that you have colds and flu. Oh, so this is right. used in some countries. They actually mix this up as sort of a cold remedy. Got to look at the, read the label on yogurt, for, look for the sugar content and the protein content, well, right? Right. Well, and sugar, remember there's added sugars and the naturally occurring right, sugars. Right, the added sugars as well. Right. I also don't like the non-nutritive sweeteners either. We know that they yeah. can impact the gut microbiome, which is again, 20 years ago when I became a dietitian was not something we were talking about, something we talk about now. So science ebbs and flows and changes. So speaking of red, let's move into red red palm oil, right? Okay. Something that is used in foods as, um, you know, it's a fat that is a shelf-stable fat that is a natural replacement for trans fats. And this beautiful red color is also makes it a very uh, powerful antioxidant. It's got beta-carotene, tocotrienols, vitamin E in there. And it is in a lot of, I brought some nut spreads, but it's also found in things like chocolate and in some bars. Okay, too. Let's do super cute. We got a uh, quick, got to wrap okay, up. Okay, ascorbic this. acid. People get crazy about ascorbic acid. It's vitamin C, folks. It's it's, it's fine. An antioxidant. Okay. It's fine. It's not like acid, like battery acid. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. <laughs> so if you see that on a label, it's just fine. It just comes from fruit or a derivative. That's of right. Fruit. That's Thank right. you so much. We pick up your book again. If you want to check it out, uh, Living Skinny in Fat Genes, spelled with a G, there by uh, Dr. Felicia Stoller, registered dietitian. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank Guys, you. You know, I like to read labels. So we know you do. Get on it. Get on it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Ariane. Well, the results are in for an epic...